G'day guys, Dirty Ralph, I was thinking um, this morning, well half asleep, half not, what might be wrong with this saw, and why it didn't have the power I thought it should have, um, so this afternoon I went out in the shed and tried something, and when you just assume things, yeah, assumption is the mother of all stuff, stuff I was, not exactly the saying, but I assumed um, from factory, the idle was this on this saw was set um, where the idle should be, so I set um, the low uh, mixture screw to run off the idle screw. Um, well, the idle screw was set too um, too much, so I had to reach up there low to bring the idle down so the chain wouldn't spin. So what I did was lean out the idle screw, the low screw that on there, until um, it would uh, be nice if I could talk a bit easier, but till. Um, you got instant acceleration, and I backed off the oil screw, which is one here, and I backed it off, and I backed it off, and backed it off. And funny enough, this screw was way out. This, I pretty backed it off you know, two or three turns until I finally got low enough. Now the chain don't spin, but it's got um, instant um, up revs. Now, I'm in a house block, so I can't go out there and start revving the whole other thing that um, wolves of blue smoke was coming to the exhaust, so she wants to get up and go now. Um... So maybe I've fixed up what this problem was. It still has very low compression. Like the compression is like, uh, it's, yeah, it's a girl compression. It's terrible. But it's new motor. So may maybe it will get bigger. Better idea very much. But now that I've learned that low out, it wants to instantly take off and rev like it should. So I'm curious to see if I put some more time on it. I've really um, get work saw running and it's some wood. So also get, take the saw at the same time there. And give this one a run too, and see if I can actually tune it better. But um, you got to look at your lows on in your oil um, screws. I've come across saws before, and I've never really thought about people play around with things. And this is a brand new cubby, so I just didn't think nothing of it. I just thought, yeah, if actually set, it'd be fine. But um, what I'm saying is, do your low, get it right, and if it instantly revs up, it goes the way it should. Um, that's when you adjust your oil screw back until it runs right. Instant revs until it runs right. And then after that, adjust your high. But I just adjust the low and got running right. And it was quite good, but it was rich. But it just had no power. And I just assumed because of low compression. Well, maybe the compression not really the whole story, which I don't think it is. I think it's actual low on the carby. So I'll get this going. I'll do it. I'll not tune it. And maybe Dirty Ralph might actually undirty itself. But Dirty Ralph has that little secret. She licks where she was. It's about here though. Where she was on the shelf. It's oil everywhere. I should take her out of there. I'll show you where she sits and she's dead. He's dead himself. Well, you can't see. But there's a lot of oil leaked out from Dirty Ralph. Mitch waiting itself all over the shelf next to my style 635. Mark 1, I think, or Mark 2, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, leaking oil everywhere. And the oil's come down to the on top of this box here, so it's all looking out of the, um, the saw, so, yeah, that's why I call it Dirty Ralph, because she's dirty, um, there's Frankenstein, um, I need to sit down and do some more work on Frankenstein, Mad Max, it. I'm going to, um, get a, um, I've got the, the boot, so, uh, 395 XP boot, bring it up that way, up there, so I can put a proper air filter off the car here. I need to buy um, bolts, right size bolts, to actually screw into the um, baffle plate at the back, make a bracket, big air fit on top, and it's 372 carby. This thing rocks, it really does, it screams um, power wise. I'm very happy with this only Chinese chainsaw 48mm piston, but it goes harder than what you can imagine. But trying to get the carby to match up and um, do what it's got to do, it just doesn't want to work. So I need to get that um, air fills air and all that crap worked out. So I'll end up um, cutting some of this metal up here out, uh, make a bracket somehow to mount that car here where it should sit. And yeah, but that's what, that'd be Frankenstein. Frankenstein. But she does work, and I've had it work. I blew the um, pulse line off. But before that, I wasn't feeling that this pulled harder than oh, most saws because it's a lot. It'll keep up with 372 easily, but that's the next video. I'll have to do that. Anyway, guys, I hate my waffling.
from the Den Undercat, MS-034, uh, a solo 636, um, modern one, small saw, a solo 606, uh, Husqvarna um, Rancher, 55, I think it is, yeah. yeah, Rancher there, Rancher, uh, McCulloch, 184, uh, four, 484, I've got two of them now, and the guy who told me the other one, he said, they were in a John Wayne movie, that's worth two and a half thousand dollars, I bought 50 bucks, I said, what movie? He goes, oh, John Wayne, John Wayne movie. But we can't. My wife loves John Wayne. We didn't know about the chainsaws in the movie. Um, I got this one from my father-in-law. Uh, it's got the plastic bits on it. Um, the manual, manual all up there. A little red bit. So that's passed on that. It was missing a bar. He's using it for a post hole auger. So the other saw I got. Um, there we go. Incident there. The other saw I got's got a bar and chainsaw. I'll get all the good parts to get a running rod. But yeah, all things are things. There's a solo um, brick. So that will go, that brick there will go on a chainsaw, a uh, water pump, whippy snipper, um, lawnmower. Yeah, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. Um, so 654 um, cylinder there. Good cylinder, but terrible spark plug hole. It needs to be um, fixed up. Now that solo 636, that's been poured. The thing goes like clubs. Got a new pieces in that. It's really good. I'm not quite impressed with that thing. But yeah. All right, guys. Not me one. There's more crap than here. Another six thirty-five mark one or mark two. I'm not sure what that one is. Yeah. I'm looking for parts for my lathe. I found it the hard way. Um, you gotta have a reversible motor to get your electric motor to spin the way you won't need to. So in my one, I've got any bandsaw. Um, spun. Uh, what would you say? Uh, any clockwise, so the lathe was spinning the wrong way, so the uh, uh, chuck at the front here would, would come off if you're not careful. So, I'm saving up for that so I can do the lathe work. I've got um, dial indicators and bits and pieces, so you're going into um, my chainsaws and doing what I want to do. But, um, yeah, I've got cars and stuff, can't even get to it. Let me box and stuff, got rid of some of these saws. I've got boxes and lathe bits and pieces because I want to be able to. Make this as professional as I can. So, is that a oh, cheap ticket? So, more um, tanks and carbide cars so I can bore into the cylinders. Um, there's a dial indicator on if that, put that one on top up there. But there's always something going on. I, I love doing my chances. I got um, a bit of I mean, aluminium the other day, or aluminium. Um, that's 55 mil. So I'll probably um, grind that back to 50 mil and 52. I'm not quite sure. I'm only 54, I think it was. 54. I thought that. But I want to make a couple of um, these. So I could um, do basic um, squish and stuff like that. But um, yeah, there's always something going on. That's my, my plan. I'll have to work on this, the 3120 very soon. I'll work out what's going on with the oil pump with that. Um, I've got my um, wood yard guy. has got this... Um, uh, Husqvarna 395 XP I'll get that thing working for him that's the brothers to chomp but yeah there's always something going on guys so I'll keep making videos for you if you keep watching thanks guys over and out